Namaskar, good evening. A very warm welcome to all our viewers. We are about to commence the 43rd session of the Virasit talk being organized by the Archaeological Explorations and Excavations Department of the Heritage Society, Patna. At the outset, I would request you all to please share this live link so that we may reach out to more people in our efforts to promote and preserve the rich cultural heritage of our country. I am Bhamoti Basu, a Virasat Mitra of the Heritage Society from Kolkata, and it is my absolute honor and privilege to introduce to you our distinguished guest for the evening, Sri Shubhashish Das. Mr. Das is an author and independent researcher based in Jharkhand. His area of interest includes the lesser known aspects of ancient India, such as the tribals, their megaliths, groves, religions, spirits, gods, their signs, and their traditions. Sri Das has authored quite a number of books on his research and discoveries. In Quest of the Megaliths, The Unknown Civilization of Prehistoric India, The Vengeans are a few. He's regularly invited for lectures the world over, and his research on megaliths has also been included in the history syllabus of the Jharkhand Education Board. He's also passionate about reading, writing poems, playing the guitar, and about photography. Welcome, sir. Welcome to our show. It is indeed an honor to have you with us today. We are sure to behold a very interesting hour of session. Please, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That was of quite a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. And before I begin, just permit me to express my utmost gratitude, uh, gratitude to Dr. Duvedi, Manitaji and their esteemed Heritage Society for inviting me to speak in this excellent platform. Well, I shouldn't also forget uh, Riti Bhattacharya earlier in the morning for introducing me so splendidly like uh, she did. Uh, I forget your name. Can I have it once again, please? Bhamoti. Bhamoti. That's a wonderful name. And thank you again to you. So Pleasure. I have My been name. I have been told uh, to give a talk on my research on the megaliths of Jharkhand. Well, here I am. Well, I, I, I want to tell, I was just looking into this website. Uh, just today morning of the Heritage Society. And I found that the, under the ages of Dr. Dvivedi and his fitting wife, Manitaji, they are doing a remarkable job in the archaeological fields. And uh, I must say that you are indeed an asset for scholarly uh, studies and academics. So your wonderful work you are doing. And thank you for inviting me for this lovely, uh, in this, uh, lovely platform, for delivering a speech for the lovely audience who would be online today. Now, <coughs> before I begin uh, further, I wish to talk a little about megaliths. I mean, they are not quite known to the multitude. Even if they are known, they are not known fully. So therefore, I am here to take you on a journey of such a relic about which very much less is known. Whatever is known is known to the anthropologists and the archaeologists, but not to the common man. Well, you see, I am not an archaeologist. I am just an independent researcher. So my lecture wouldn't be archaeology based. But in my research, I have taken a lot from archaeology. But I will not present it technically. I will present it 
in a very simple manner to the common man. In my research, apart from archaeology, I have included anthropology, tribalism, their folklore, their geography, their sciences, their astronomy for my research. Rather, while talking on the Meghal itself, it had taken a holistic approach towards the first ever built temples of the humankind, the Megaliths. All right. So now I will uh, uh, move over to this uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh, come. Let's be on this journey on this exciting world of Megaliths. Now, what is a megalith? All right. That is one of the foremost questions a person asks. The term megalith has been coined by merging two Greek words, mega, that means large, and lithos, that suggests stone. A megalith, therefore, would mean a large stone. Now, a megalith is particularly burials of the dead. So what type of burials are these? The first of all, they are the below the ground. They are the cysts. Okay, The chambers are also above the ground. They are known as the dolmens. And some are partially above and partially below the ground. The dolmenoid cysts. Okay? In Jharkhand, we have a particular type of a dolmen known as the sandiri. They are the chamber tombs. So therefore, we have three types of burial, the chamber tombs, the non-chamber tombs, and the non-sepulchral tombs. Sepulchral would mean concerning the body of the dead. I mean, there's no burial or burying, burying of the dead in here, such tombs. Now, on contrary to the common idea of megaliths, that megaliths are burials of the dead, there are certain things you must understand that megaliths are burials of various kinds. Megaliths are also burials, memorials of the dead. And not only of the dead, but even of something else that we will discuss a little later. There are also boundary markers. And from times immemorial, if not the time immemorial, from the Neolithic times or maybe from the Chalcolithic times all over the world, and in India, maybe from the Chalcolithic, the Bronze, or maybe from the Iron Age, they have been hold, uh, held as the fertility burial temples. There are a few across the world in India, as well as in Archarkhan, which are astronomical observatories. Now in India, uh, sorry, in Jharkhand, there are about 32 tribes. Okay. And of them, there are about four and plus one, four among the proto astroloid tribes, the Mundas, the Asur, the Hos, and the Santal, and one among the Dravidian Kuruk speaking tribes, the Orao. These people raised megalithic tombs, megalithic stones, and megalithic shrines above on their dead after the burials. So Jharkhand is one of the rarest places in the country where megalith making still continues today as a continued tradition since much ancient times. Okay, Jharkhand currently has 32 tribes and of which four still continue with the much ancient practice of megalith making on their deceased since unknown times. Well, how many tribes among this had a megalithic burial custom in the past is not distinctly known. There must have been a few more megalithic tribes in the past, uh, but they are extinct today or might have merged with some other megalithic group or may have deserted the megalithic burial tradition. However, uh, okay, so let me introduce you a furthermore 
regarding megaliths. Now, India is an amazing land of megaliths. From Kashmir to Kerala and from Manipur to Gujarat, this sacred land of this country is interspersed with megaliths, save a few places, save a few states. The presence of such a large cache of tribal megaliths in the country endorses the verity that India was once the predominant land of the non-Aryan tribes. Among the 24 districts of Jharkhand, the majority of them accommodate large numbers of megaliths, hmm? uh, ranging from the much ancient to the present, present times. Now, surprisingly, each district displays the separate architecture of these monuments. Okay. Now, in the ostrich vernacular, I mean, whenever I talk of ostrich vernacular, I would uh, uh, refer to the uh, speech of these tribals. Okay, they speak in the ostrich language, one of the most uh, uh, randomly used the languages in prehistoric India. And if we go by Suniti Kumar Chatterjee, from Afghanistan to uh, the Mekong Valley, uh, the the uh, Mundari language, the ostrich Mundari language, various, there were variety of uh, Mundari language that was predominant in this area. So in this particular speech, the Kolarian uh, proto-Australoid tribes and, among, and even among the Dravidian speaking tribe, dolmens were called Sasandiri. So Mundari Sasandiri comprises of a capstone. Capstone would be a, a kind of a center stone placed on four or more stone. Here, I would wish, I wish to show you one. There you are. I'm standing in front of a large Sasandiri burial. So you can see the capstone. It is placed on six orthostats. And the other one in here, it's a table-like formation. It's a center stone placed on four autostats. A sasandiri is meant to perform as a family grave vault in which the cremated bones of the deceased of the same family are inserted. Okay. Now, capstones of a few sasandiri dolmens comprise portholes like this one. You can see this through these portholes, uh, it is meant that the, the bones and the ashes of the dead are meant to be popped in. And many a times these inner chambers are uh, clear. Okay, now there are menhirs. Menhirs are the tall standing stones. So in Jharkhand, these menhirs are called birdiris, birkhols, uh, uh, or even bur uh, burudiris. Okay, so they are the memorials of the dead. Okay, so here is one. So these even uh, serve as commemorative for several purposes beside death. Okay, now let me show a few of this and then I will discuss a little more on this menheads. Here is another one. Okay, now these serve as commemorative or memorials for several purposes besides death. Birdiri menhirs can be seen erected to commemorate a variety of noteworthy events as the birth of a much longed girl in a family. Maybe a family does not have a girl child. And that particular tribal family seeks uh, uh, the birth of a girl child. And eventually the family is blessed with one. So they would place a menhir in the memory of that in the, um, to commemorate the event. Or maybe, uh, say, for instance, the, uh, the, uh, when Jharkhand was uh, under Bihar, and rather when the, both the states were attached, the activists uh, 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 would be struggling for a separate Jharkhand state. They would be jailed, the activists. Now, if they are freed, now they would have uh, raised a uh, menhir for that. Okay, Some even display the totem or the kili of the dominant tribe of a village. Uh, okay, I have even seen in the uh, hinterlands of uh, the woods of Sindega, uh, even uh, for a dead elephant and want to uh, celebrate the birth of a mythical tiger born to a tribal girl. And several even serves as a boundary marker like this one. 
such standing stones which are boundary markers in is also known as the simana diri diri is a stone actually now the mundari birdiri men hairs can be seen uh, to be placed in a row they are normally aligned one after another the mundari sasandiri has already been described above but the mundas are also known of uh, 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 to place stone slab or center stones uh, above their uh, funerary funerary pots even these kind of slabs are known as sasandiri so i will discuss these stone slabs and i'll show you a few images of these also a little later on now the urau sasandiri okay the urau the another tribe they they, they speak the dravidian kurd language they have a different combination of a for a sasandiri now for it they have a dolmen of uh, in which they have a flat cap stone placed on four or more um, uh, autostats and a birdiri menhir like this one okay i'm sitting in one can you see it there's a standing uh, uh, birdiri and there's a flat sasandiri so this is uh, a combination this entire setup is a urau uh, uh, sasandiri so here is another one so now uh, the present day uh, urau still erect this one but they are more of petite sizes the asur tribals the uh, iron smelting asurs are also a, a mundari proto australoid tribe they also place uh, these they, they have they have large uh, burial slabs they have their sasandiris on that day now why do these uh, tribals differ in their uh, megalithic architecture there are various reasons various scholars have given various reasons for it say for instance van exem he he would say that uh, these different uh, architectures depended on different age groups of the dead the nature of the person's death say for instance he died of cholera or somebody who dies while sowing um, uh, paddy or maybe the reaping paddy or maybe he is bitten by a snake all these would get uh, receive a different kind of burials however i i have seen that uh, most places the stern distinctiveness of the megalithic architectures are not maintained today i have observed that in couple of megalithic sites a few urau types of sandiris were erected by the even by the mundari families as this one this to me is a, a, perhaps a mundari setup uh, which has been influenced by the urau ones okay so uh, and the these sandiris were originally melt, meant to be burials but today i have seen that many of such uh dolmens and sasandiris are used as memorials now every tribal village in the state has a burial ground having diverse name has hargadis hargada harsali and jangara let me show you a few here is one this is one of the largest uh, uh, megalithic sites of the country uh this is chokahatu this is a hargadi it's a huge you can see a part of the uh, hargadi of uh, chokahatu you can see the slabs that was that i was talking of there is another one this is another hargadi you can see of uh, one or two standing stones and the others are uh, the burial slabs or sasandiris this one uh, is a hargadi of standing stones should be of a different tribe which of which we do not know much here is another one this seems to be mundari maybe a, a few could be oraus as well here is another one this is perhaps a ho symmetry this is a ho sasandiri a hargadi in which the both the birdiris and the sasandiris can be seen and here is another one now these hargadis would comprise an assortment of varied megalithic architecture each among the four different types have their uh, separate megalithic architectures as we have talked at uh, right now uh, both in the north in the central and the southern uh, 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 charkand about uh, talking of this hargadis i mean these hargadis could be thousands and years old 
and many of these are still in use. Uh, as I told you, that Jharkhand has a continued tradition of uh, uh, the, the, uh, this has a, a continued tradition of megalithism. So, me, the Adivasis in the state have continuously planted Sasandiris and Biddiris in this land. Now, Megalith said, Jharkhands are not merely confined to sacred burial Hargadis only. They could be seen everywhere, even outside the Hargadis. A few could also be seen inside the sacred groves, like Sarnas. Here's one. There's one megalithic site inside the sacred groves. Now, this Hargari is placed inside a sacred grove. Such sacred groves can even be seen in the northeastern part of India. Here is another one. This is this kind of megalithic uh, burials uh, or memorials can be seen inside the sacred groves. Now, Esiroy, the doyen of Indian anthropology and ethnography, he had excavated a few uh, megalithic sites in Belwadag and in Kuti. And while digging, he found out he yielded few cinerary urns and jars, uh, jars. He found few earthen jars, stone and copper beads, water jugs with uh, short spouts, bronze and copper bracelets, rings and bells. Okay. So, but the burial typology in the megaliths of Jharkhand until now, that is learned, is of pot burials. Okay. Now, here is one I to want to show you the pot burials. Now, let me describe to you this particular uh, digging over here. I'm not excavating it. Actually, what had happened? This particular men here had fallen down and I was instructed by the deputy commissioner uh, of, this, of, of, of my town to somehow erect this uh, particular uh, menhir uh, to its original position. For that, we had to dig it. And we found this particular pot inside. There is another, and here is another, uh, the buried ones. And the white ones, you can see, they are nothing but the bones. Okay. Now, cinerary pots have been yielded from megalithic tombs as fallout of road making across many prehistoric sites, plowing about megalithic tombs. Uh, and also by deliberate digging on a megalithic site. You know, these people, there are many people who had dug into this megalithic site in hope of buried treasure. Hmm? So uh, now the problem here lies a problem. Would these, would these burials, these pots, be anyhow related? Would these ones be anyhow related uh, uh, to the megalithic at the bottom? No. Now this is something I need to talk to you right now. Excuse me, just a moment. This is time for one of my medicines. Now, let me tell you of another burial mode burial. This is known as the Sat Bharwa mode burial. Now, this was in practice not only among the tribals, but even among the Dalits. Even a few decades ago, this has been coming down from times immemorial. What would be done in this? The bones would be immersed by the Dalits in a river, in any river held sacred by these people. Or they were put in small pots and after a ride buried beside these ancient menhirs. Now, this is known as the Sadhbaruma. The tribals. I presume were influenced by the Dalits. I wouldn't say this is precisely a tribal uh, ritual. I presume this has been influenced by them whilst staying and living together. Now, 
to my understanding these ones perhaps could relate to uh, the sadbharwa and not to the original megalithic burials now why the pot because i want to uh, you should know i presume uh, 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 that megaliths were the temples or shrines of the fertility cult coming down from a very ancient time fertility cult was one of the oldest religion that was prevalent all over the world now the pot is the symbolization or the representative of the mother's womb the idea behind megalithism is that coming out of the mother's womb you go back to the mother's womb after you are dead therefore we find numerous architecture the stone circle the circle is also symbolical of the mother's womb and the burial inside also suggests this and the pot is also symbolical of the mother's womb and inside they would put the with these cremated bones uh, the uh, ashes and even things that were required in the next life okay so now um, uh, this is uh, what we had uh, uh, talked of uh, the uh, sad bharwa and now let us go back <coughs> Another, I, I wish to talk to you of another particular uh, aspect of Jharkhand megaliths. It is the presence of melted bitumen. What they would do, that they would pour black bitumen on top of megaliths. This is some sort of a, a funerary ritual. I'm not sure of it, how and why this is done. But I know of one ritual of the rubbing of the mustard oil on men heads. Around the vernal equinoxes on the months of March or April, and they would light lamps for the departed ancestors. You know, worshipping of ancestors was also a part of the fertility cult. Now let us come back to the well, Ho uh, Megaliths. Hoes, you know, are a predominant tribe on the south of Jharkhand, around Chaibasa. Chaibasa is the, one of the most amazing megalithic town of Jharkhand that each home holds sepulchral slabs. Yeah, I wish to show you. There you go. This, I can see the sepulchral slabs. These are in the courtyard of the Ho tribes. So, you know, when uh, somebody dies after the cremation they would put them inside the pot and they would bury it in the courtyard and on it they would place the stone slab Sasan Devi that means no one even after their departure or even after their death is out of their family they, are, they remain to be a part of the family so departed ancestors the worship of ancestors, as I have talked a little earlier, was a part and still is a part of the fertility cult. So <clears throat> quite a few of the, uh, after this, they would uh, erect the uh, memorial uh, stones, the uh, home men heads. The home men heads, if you can see over here, are very tall. And mind you, they are not that old. They could be a few years old, 50 years, 60 years, 100 years, or maybe a 20 years of old. Uh, they are 12 to 14 feet in height. So, <coughs> uh, they were. So, after this, I wish to take, uh, take you to a, another sort of a megalith. The megalithic architecture of another uh, district. Okay. So, this is a place called Pathalgada. In the Chatra district. Now the word Pathal Gadda, it is a Hindi word, Hindi word for megalith. It's not an ostrich word. Pathal means a stone and the Gadda means a burial. So thick is the density of megaliths 
in the uh, region of Pathalgata that if you throw a stone up in the sky and where it drops, you are bound to find a megalith there. Okay, so there is a varied range of megalith in this uh, 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 particular uh, uh, state, uh, sorry, district. So uh, one type of uh, 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 megalithic architecture that is typical to Chatra district and its adjoining a, a, a neighborhood district is a leaning menhir that rests on a smaller upright stone facing either the due north or the east. See, here you are. You can see it's a little inclined and it is resting on another smaller size stone. Okay. I want to show you another one over here. It gives you that impression that perhaps the taller men, men, men here is about to fall and the smaller one is, is given it some sort of a um, support. No, 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 no. It isn't that. If you can see over here and here is another and here is another. Now, these ones, they face the either sides. You see, now these ones do not have a name. So I have taken the liberty to Christian it as the lean support menace. So over this one, you can see that these have been placed on the either sides and they face the due north, the, 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 due, the north, uh, I hope you all know, is the, is the place, is the uh, direction of the dead. Hmm? That is how you place the body, the dead body. The head should be uh, uh, pointing or to, uh, towards, uh, it should be aligned, oriented towards the north. Now, these ones are, uh, you know, oriented both towards the north and the other one uh, faces the due south. Now, another feature uh, of the megaliths of this particular district and its adjoining ones is the presence of trees as the banyans, Mahua or the people. Uh, here I have made it trees inside the megalithic sites. A little earlier I had shown you megalithic sites inside a sacred grove, a cluster of trees. But here we find trees inside a cluster of megaliths. Just the opposite. This is very interesting. Here you are. I stand among a cluster of megaliths, this is a Hargari tribal, and there you are, and that is a tree over there, a single tree, and the trees are particularly Banyan, Mahua, or people. Now, this is very difficult to say whether the plantation of these trees were a letter day exercise in these age old megaliths, or do these belong to the lineage of much older ones uh, that cannot be ascertained, you know. Banyans and the peoples are sacred to the Hindus and the Buddhists, but not for the tribals. For the tribal, it is the Sal and the Karam. And strangely, I, despite these ones, these megalithic Hargaris, despite them being tribals, I could not find any Sal or Karam trees within these uh, uh, tribal uh, uh, megaliths. Now, Therefore, do this plantation of these trees in this tribal megaliths in some manner indicate to the acculturation of these tribal sites into the Hindu or the Buddhist world? Now, that is really very difficult to suggest. Now, talking of another state called Ramgar, uh, this is home, this particular region is home to single manes, hargaris, dolmens, and canes. Now, this particular uh, here is another one, sorry. Uh, if you can see the, uh, the, uh, the tree is uh, inside uh, this particular megalithic site. Now, I was talking of this particular uh, dolmen. Now, there is a chamber over there. Although it looks a natural erection, but there is the chamber. And in that chamber, villagers had dug out ancient coins that means they were buried over there as well as bones so and uh, beside it we the stands fayaz over there 
He is the discoverer of this particular monument. Here is another one. This is a unique uh, megalithic site. This particular uh, monument can be seen in many places across Jharkhand. You know, their flattened tops uh, have amlaka like structures, like the amlakas we have it on, on the temples. And the other ones, they have deep cavities dug into it. The only feasible interpretation of this amlaka of the stones could be that these might stand for turbans, representative of kings and the ones with the tapered tops with large holes into them could be symbolical of the queens. So these could be uh, symbols uh, of the burial of, uh, uh, of a king or a queen. Only thing, uh, I mean, this could be possibly be substantiated if only a proper excavation is made in this kind of sites. All right. <clears throat> now, if we come to my hometown of Hazariba, now Hazariba, that is in the north of Rachi, Hazariba has one of the most stunning of the megalithic sites and they are much different i tell you they have hazari Bagh has huge menheads you know major megalithic complexes and dolmens with huge capstones but one particular aspect of hazari Bagh megaliths is the presence of triangles of various sizes as well as pointed tipped menheads the ones that we see among the uh, Mundari uh, Hargaris, the Munda still uh, erect Virdinis uh, in that form. They have that erected, pointed tipped uh, menheads. Now, now, talking of these triangles, this is a phenomenon I have not seen anywhere in the megaliths of Jharkhand or elsewhere in the country. Now, the triangles and the pointed tipped menheads. You can see in over here, this is a beautiful megalithic site. And on the left, you can see that I have circled it. It's a triangle. Can you see it? Isn't this wonderful? Here is another one. This is an inclined one. Inclined deliberately. And why this is the deliberate uh, inclination? I would not explain it to you now. If you can get hold of a few of my books, one of my latest, the Archaeoastronomy of a few megalithic sites of Jharkhand, I have explained this uh, beautiful astronomical site. And here I have explained why this has been done uh, inclined. So you have a pointed tip and see the marvelously carved in the polished minhead. See, this is a smaller one. You can see this is a, a small um, equilateral triangle and the three sides are equal and it points up to the sky and here is another in the foreground i have circled it this is a small equilateral triangle pointing up to the sky and at the back that one you can see it also has a pointed tip this is a quite a big uh, uh, megalithic site. This is preserved as the Pakahi Baba. Now the tribals do not worship here. The tribals have left, and the Hindus worship it, uh, known as the Pakahi Baba. This is the uh, harvest goddess of uh, the farmers. Okay, so this is very rare uh, uh, thing among the. Uh, uh, of triangles in Hazari Bagh. Now let us come down to one of the largest megalithic sites of the country and certainly of the state, Chokahatu. It was uh, in 1982, uh, sorry, 1998, that I had read Dalton's paper and, and after reading it, I reached Chokahatu. Okay. Now, this is an amazing Choka uh, Hargari. The word Chokahatu comes uh, from the combination of two words. Choka, which is coming in from Shok or mourning. And Hatu is the place. Therefore, 
Chokahatu would mean a place for mourning. Okay. Now, in it, in that particular uh, paper of Dalton Sahab of uh, the late 19th century, I uh, read it to find out that this uh, enormous site contained a, over 8,000 megalithic tombs. And here is another one. I'm, uh, I'm standing over a sasandari over there. And the most crucial part, which I found that once I had been to the site about three or four times. The crucial part about this is that this site is not only enormous, it is spread to a uh, size of about eight acres of land. It is not only about that size that matters, it is about the continuous usage of this particular site that had you know, inspired me to have this site be declared a world heritage, a megalithic site, the first turn of its kind in the country. But till now, nothing has happened. But I have been told Haya Benakal and Karnataka is perhaps going to be awarded with this much uh, coveted uh, award of world heritage. Fine enough. If, a uh, megalithic site in India gets awarded, that would be the first time. None of our tribal archaeological site has been awarded so far. Uh, that is a, indeed a very good thing, but I'm trying for Chokahatu as well. I do not know I would be successful or not. There are several megalithic sites and burials, Arganis, adjacent to uh, Chokahatu. Now, let me take you to a very interesting uh megalithic site of Khuti. Now these three standing menheads, very slim looking uh birdiris. Now what is surprising and mysterious and enigmatic about these ones that there is a hargadi quite near to it and in it the mundas bury their dead and raise megaliths in there. If that be so, then why are these megaliths, these menheads, are outside that particular uh, burial, burial ground? That that is an enigma. So I this I do not want to talk much on this particular site because this site is still my study site. I'm working on it. Unfortunately, the site is now surrounded by buildings, but I'm trying to study on it and. Uh, why is this important? Maybe I would be able to convey to, to the AU uh, uh, maybe a, an year or two later after I complete my study and research on this particular site. Now, there was one particular uh, tribe, although Hinduized today, the Bhumij. They also raised, uh, raised uh, uh, Sasandiri slabs along the Damodar River in Bokaro and Ramgarh and that went on till Bengal, Madhukunda and Asansol till that. So they are Hinduized, but uh, they do not, I do not know, they, uh, they do, do not perhaps raise uh, any more of those megaliths. Now, let me talk to you about a, uh, another type of a megalith known as the canes. Now, in and around this Santal Parganas, many cane burials representing the ones, uh, uh, resembling the ones that I have found in Chatra and Hazaribad can be seen. Eva, here is one of the canes. This is near Chitaranjan. Now, you can see such canes beginning from Chitaranjan till the Santal Parganas in Dumka, in Godda, these are burials, okay? Not old, this could be a few years old, maybe a hundred or, or fifty years of age. Now, what is interesting about this particular cave? So, if you notice that there are three tones, okay? Uh, there are white quadrice, there is a beige, and there is a black. Now, these have a north-south orientation, place primarily in the foot of the hills. There is the hill on this side. I have not 
uh, I'm not showing you right now. And here is a cluster of this uh, particular three tone stone uh, canes mm -hmm. uh, with the north south orientation placed beside uh, a hill and uh, Badma, the Bodhma hill, yes, something like that, Bodhma hill in Chitranjan. Now, many of them uh, are indeed new. Now, these ones can be see the similar ones or near similar ones can even be seen around Hazaribad district and even in Chatra. Here is one in the Chatra district. Okay. And here is another near Ramgarh. This is a beautiful one. I love this particular uh, cane. So now the finding of the canes in Chatra, in Hazaribad, in Ramgarh, and finding the similar ones, the more modern ones in around Santal Pargana. Okay, this substantiation that confirms one thing that according to the folklore of Santal, that indeed dwelled in and around Hazaribad and uh, Chatra as they migrated in to Hazaribagh a few thousands years ago and after that they went to South Bhum in Purulia and from there they had migrated to uh, Santal Parkana and another group uh, went in uh, from the Giridi side and wherever they went from this particular side these canes can be seen. Now another uh, thing of these megaliths Many parts of Jharkhand, you do not find many tribals. The tribals have left, leaving behind their megalithic monuments, leaving behind their sacred groves and their other temples known as the Majitan. Okay, now the worship of megalith by non tribals and these particular megaliths are presently worshipped with different names, under different names by other communities. Now, this particular megalith is worshipped by the Hindus as well as the few tribals that are laid, uh, left in there. All right. This particular sacred stone is known as the Udrastan. Okay. And uh, the Asariya Puja, in the months of Asar, it is conducted in here and it is not conducted by the Brahmin priest. You know, these alternative temples, this, this megalith, these groves do not have Brahmin priests. The priests are generally Dalits. They are the, uh, uh, non, normally the Ganjus. They are generally the Asurs, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Agarya Asurs maybe or maybe that Jamars, they are normally the, uh, the priests who worship in this. All right. Here is another one. It's a large stone and you can see the white vermilion, uh, sorry, the, the, the reddish and the pinkish vermilion marks on this. This is a sacred stone and the Pahan, the Pahan is actually the priest, you know, the Pahan is actually a Ganju in here. And this is the tutelary deity. This is a part of a large uh, megalithic complex. This faces the due east. And this also the side has a east to a north south orientation. There are, where are a few more stones as, alongside this standing menhir, which is now lost. Now, this particular menhir, you can see the uh, vertical uh, vermilion marks. This is a worship by the Bhuya community. And this is their Gawat. Gawat is actually, actually the tutelary deity of the village, of the uh, of the uh, of the Bhuyas. No, the, the tribals do not worship this uh, men here anymore. Because there are no tribals nearby. This is also another phenomenon uh, uh, in India. <clears throat> Now, as I have told you earlier, megaliths are not only associated with death, they are 
also associated with the boundaries. They are associated with commemoration. They are associated with similar uh, uh, such a worship, and they are also associated with astronomy. Thousands of years before, even before the the Baraha uh, Meher or Aryabhata, these kind of things. Now, in the Vedic mathematics, we have the Siddhant astronomy. Okay, Siddhant is calculations. The tribal astronomy, the megalithic astronomy, is not Siddhant. It is not calculation. It is horizontal. It is observational. Okay, so therefore, this uh, is known as archaeoastronomy. Now, this term archaeoastronomy stems from two particular words, archaeology and astronomy. Archaeo is the short form of archaeology. So it could also be uh, mentioned as astroarchaeology, but this uh, it has been accepted as the more popular term. Now, before I go into it, I wish to show you a uh, few photographs, uh, two or three photographs of uh, um, astronomical megaliths of uh, European uh, megaliths. Okay, these have been found to be aligned and oriented towards the equinoctial and the solstitial sunrises. Here's one. Now, this is the World Heritage Site, the most famous megaliths of them all, the Stonehenge in. Uh, Wilshire in England. Now, this people, hundreds and thousands of people have gathered to view this sunrise of summer solstice of 20 or 21st June, the midsummer sunrise, the most significant day of the megalithic uh, folks. Okay, because uh, this is all associated with fertility cult. Why this is important? I will talk to you later on. And here is another, New Grange. New Grange is a representative of a mother's womb. So, and this is a passage uh, grave over there. And on the right side, you can see uh, uh, the light entering. All through the year, 365 days of the year, the grave lies in complete darkness, excepting on the 22nd or the 23rd of December morning of the winter solstice for a few seconds, the sun enters this particular grave, this particular passage and enlightens it. Can you see it? This beautiful sunrise through the light box in uh, the passage. They, uh, this passage is actually facing the winter solstice sunrise. Now, this understanding, this knowledge of the sunrise and the transits of the sun was known to the ancients. You see, the sun, we have a general belief that the sun rises on the east every day. No, it doesn't. The sun does not necessarily rise uh, uh, on the east. I would rather not use the word necessarily. It does not rise. Only twice in a calendrical year, the sun rises. The sun actually drips from one solstice to the other. From the winter solstice to the summer solstice and back. While drifting from the winter solstice to the summer solstice, the sun passes the equinoctial points on the 20 or the 21st March. And thereafter, it heads towards the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere on the 20th or the 21st March. Okay. And thereafter, it returns from the next day and it, it moves on towards the Tropic of Cancer in the southern hemisphere. And while doing so, it again passes the point of the autumnal equinox on the 22nd or the 23rd of September. Just a moment, please. Now, this knowledge of the transit of the sun, these people had it. 
why these things were important certainly this was associated with the fertility cult i would not this is i cannot talk much large on this because this requires an entire um, another hour more only thing i can tell you that uh, during the summer solstice in the mid uh, in the noon there is no uh, shadow okay and in the equinoxes the pe these people found that the earth at uh, the day and the night were of equal lengths and during the winter solstice they found the day to be the shortest in the northern hemisphere these things these three things could have caused them to build and align their particular megaliths towards the sun rises all right this is a new study in india but it began when alchin for the first time in india wrote about some 40 non sepulchral megaliths non uh, they were not associated with death in the region of southern hemisphere he wrote it in uh, perhaps uh, in, in in the in, in the journal man in the year 1956 these particular megaliths include a nilurallu this is Nelurallu, Hanam Sagar, and Bibhutihalli. Okay, they're all in the southern part of India. And Padaya, however, discover uh, uh, later on a few more of these non sepulchral stones. Okay, uh, sorry, sites. Quite a few other megalithic uh, settings, like the beautiful yet the ro uh, the ruined stone circle of Asota in Pakistan. I will show it, uh, you Asota a little later. Burjom in near Srinagar. Nothing, nothing was found. No bones, neither tools, nothing. Absolutely non sepulchral. And the archaeologists went on to say that these were astronomical, uh, sorry, memorials. But strangely, Asota in Pakistan is called Surya Mandir. It's called the Solar Temple. It still is called reminiscence of the astronomy inside that particular megalithic structure i will show you a little later on now <clears throat> research into megaliths of uh, nilaskal and nilurallu by the indian institute of astrophysics and tata institute of fundamental research revealed that the fact many of these ancient megaliths were constructed as per astronomy nilurallu is the is non sepulchral in nature there's no burials inside here yeah? And it, it has no commemoration of the deaths as well. So this has been revealed uh, uh, by uh, 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 the uh, scholars of Rausa of Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Now I'm going to show you a few more. There you are, one of the sunrises, a beautiful holding of uh, the two men heads, the, the setting sun, and this particular taken from Rausa's journal. Equinoxial sunrise seen over the stone row containing stone number whatever, whatever. the sun's calculated azimuth is 89.39 degrees you can see the beautiful sunrise in between the two men heads and the azimuth is nearing 90 degree that means the sun shines the sun rises exactly if not exactly then more or less exactly from the due east, that is 90 degree. Now, over here in Nilurallu, we can see that the tribals and the people in the community of this, of this area are celebrating the equinox. You can see they are celebration at the Nilurallu uh, stone alignment site on the equinox day. This is another of Vibhuti Hali. This is perhaps one of the last photographs left of this amazing site of uh, Bebuti Halli. You can see each and every stone row. Today, of course, this uh, site is damaged as because the forest department has planted stones in it. This is very sad, you know, this is uh, of Bebuti Halli. So now over here, you can see the same particular uh, uh, 
megalithic site and you can see the stones that has been planted by the forest department but Rao Sahab has taken this particular photograph you can see three particular stones in alignment uh, to the rising sun on the equinox day absolute straight line this is the beauty of astronomy in megaliths okay now in the same lines my research of many years uncovered the concealed fact that the megaliths of Pankri Barwadi, Chano, Birbir and Katia Murbe apart from being sepulchral tombs were also created for astronomical purposes. Okay. Yes, this is Pankri Barwadi and I discovered the astronomy in this particular site more than 20 years ago. Now look at this stunning alignment how these ancient position with three stones in complete alignment if you can notice at the background the bulge in the hills now notice the wonderful alignment this is known as the mirroring of the hills by the standing stones i would tell you these ancient megalith makers were one uh, one hell of a beautiful and remarkable ingenious here you can see the people have gathered to watch the sunrise on the equinox day so pankri barwadi is the only place in india like in stonehenge and other places where one can watch the uh, equinox sunrise in between two particular stones exactly placed facing the due east they were and this particular phenomenon can be viewed only standing at a particular point only on um, uh, the equinoctial days equinoctial mornings rather and this particular there is another one this is birbir and this triangle i had shown you earlier and why was this particular triangle placed there are several interpretations of triangles one is the phallic interpretation many uh, 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 the megalithic sites in india have phalluses standing inside within the megalithic sites and many have triangles with their apex pointing upwards and that is the phallic representation but this in Birbir could be, this could be a phallic representation. We have no idea because these people left behind no documents for us. But that this is pointing towards the dewest. Exactly, you can see the sunrise on the equinoctial day. A few days later, the uh, alignment disappears. This particular triangle of Rola has been positioned in alignment to the sunrise on the winter solstice mornings this photograph has been taken on the 22nd or the 23rd december okay this site is absolutely de destroyed now completely gone and now this uh, wonderful relic of history that indians in a uh, megalithic methods were so much erudite in uh, his uh, sorry astronomy and mathematics is gone forever so now we have this particular photograph that this is pointing towards the mm, winter solstice sunrise now look at this particular megalith uh, you can read about this in my books this particular megalith you can see this alignment all in parallel rows this orientation is in between this winter solstice sunrise and the summer solstice sunset this particular most of his stones are gone today it's completely damaged but this was created maybe thousands and thousands of years ago and this particular orientation uh, between the uh, winter solstice sunrise and the summer solstice sunset and more uh, uh, do, uh, 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 stunningly speaking that this amazing sight faces a hill in the due east so this particular site is also is at the verge of complete destruction 
people have begun to uh, plant out these particular stones and tow them home. I will uh, talk about it later on. So, after this, and here is a, a list of the several equinoxes uh, alignments across the world, which includes Pankri Barwadi also. We can see the Angkor Wat uh, temple in Cambodia, where the center temple, the Sekara, is aligned toward the rising sun on the uh, equinoxes. We have Malta in here, and we have a few more. We have Stonehenge as well. So this was a global phenomenon lost with time. And we have a few left uh, among megaliths, which requires to be preserved for the posterity. Now, let us get into Kipules. So this particular Kipules, uh, uh, Kipules today are accepted as a part of rock art. Okay, this is Daraki Jatan, the largest uh, Kipule site of India. Okay. Uh, this this belongs to the Achillean age or the Achillean age. All right. Now, I have uh, found out several Kipule sites in and around um, uh, uh, Hazari Bagh, Chatra, and of course, several in Rachi on the megaliths. Now, <clears throat> this is around a particular megalithic site. See the numerous Kipules. The small circular. This is the largest uh, Kipul site in Jharkhand. This is enormous. When uh, Giriraj Kumar, Dr. Giriraj Kumar, the authority of Kipuls and rock art in India, visited this particular site, he counted uh, and we found uh, about, there were around more than 350 Kipuls in here. It's a, the largest Kipul site. Uh, so far discovered, I discovered this maybe tw uh, more than 20 years ago and beside it stands a, a, a menhir also. Here is another, this is inside a megalithic site. You can see one inclined uh, menhir, it has cupules in it and one vertical uh, uh, that also has cupules in it. Now what are cupules? Why did the entrance do it? All scholars, as many scholars are there, as many representations and interpretations are there. But one thing they have in common that these particular circular engravings are perhaps the representation of the mother goddesses. Now, uh, 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 time is uh, getting late. I need to hurry it up. So what are the grave eels? I mean, what are the grave eels? Uh, uh, that had come out from these burials. Okay, what are the grey bills? So, how did uh, uh, apart from S. C. Rai, after he had excavated a few Asura sites, Asura sites, and megalithic sites, how did these uh, grey bills come out? It had come out from road construction or road making, you know, uh, or may maybe the, the, the villagers begin to dig in uh, for uh, grave uh, treasures. And what did they find? What was found? This is one of the finds. You can see uh, this is find of a, a, a burial site, uh, of a megalithic uh, burial site. This is a pot over there. And in it, all the relics inside are copper. There isn't a single trace of any iron in it. There's a small bell as well. And all are here. We have copper slags as well. Copper ore also. But no iron, no magnetite, no hematite, no lapid, nothing. All copper um, um, ore. So can we assign these megaliths of this region to the Chalcolithic age? I do not know. Perhaps yes, perhaps no. But more excavation is required. So here is another. This was found in situ. Uh, on the right, we have a Noruna nail cutter, nail pera. On the middle, we have, uh, uh, this is the tattoo maker, and this is a brass. They are all coming out from, uh, you know, uh, land that was dug beside the megaliths. This is a 
uh, was found from the plow. This is a flute, broken fragment of a flute near a, 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 a megalithic site. This is a bone flute, bone of human or animal, we have no idea. And this particular, as I was telling that I would show you uh, that particular uh, many that we were planting after it had fallen down at the instruction of the deputy commissioner and this particular uh, pot had come out, which I feel would not be, cannot be associated with the uh, megalithic period. This I feel is a Sad Bharwa uh, 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 pot. And inside this, we found this particular, see the person is holding, it is known as a Singhi. Such Singhis are still sold in the market. Now, what is a Singhi? Singhi is a small iron cone inside way in which the cinerated ash are stuffed in and thereafter sealed and put inside that particular urn or pot and buried inside or beside a uh, uh, menhe. So this is associated with the Sat Bharwa ritual. So, and there are many that can be found in Jharkhand. So therefore, this particular uh, uh, urn, I do not think can be associated with the megalithic age or the, the megaliths. More excavation is required to find a burial inside. So these are the potteries that we had found. So uh, we, we, we found black and red pottery, red applique pottery. We have a few, uh, this, uh, such black pottery associated with the uh, uh, death and say decorative pottery, this beautiful pottery, all uh, con uh, containing ashes, or maybe these were also domestic, but uh, I do not think these were the Sadbharva ones. I presume these were the ones that were associated with the megalithic culture. Of course, that requires more research and more digging, and therefore we can come down to a particular uh, uh, result, conclusion. Now, we found several microliths in and, in and around, uh, several uh, megaliths found in situ as well. We had sent a few stone tools collected in situ or from a, a few megalithic sites and we have them had it, they have them dated in the Paleolithic Museum in uh, uh, Germany in Dresden. Now going by the patina formation, patina formation because you cannot date a particular stone tool, you can go in to the dates by the patina formation. Several of these tools were found to be made beyond 3000 BC. Now, 3000 BC would not date the megaliths. I cannot believe that 3000 BC would be the date of the megaliths. This would substantiate that there are people living around that particular place. The megaliths, of course, came later on. Okay, so now the find of the uh, uh, iron slag, uh, sorry, the copper slags and the copper to, uh, uh, implements, would that push the date back uh, of the megaliths to Chalcolithic era? era? That needs to be uh, studied more. <clears throat> now, coming down, now here is the bones that has been collected from a few megaliths. Those are the human remains. Now let me show you a few more megaliths of India as well as that of India. You must understand and see this. You see, these are uh, remains of a, a greater heritage of India. This is Asota in Pakistan. How amazing this stand. It's a ruined stone circle known as Surya Mandir. Indication that this definitely was a a uh, solar temple associated with astronomy at one period of time. Here is Burjom 
You see, that is Dr. Uh, Abhishek Mishra standing over there. He is a geologist and a great uh, science fiction writer as well, and he works with me. This is an amazing uh, megalithic site of Gojom. This is a maze uh, sent to, uh, in South India, sent to me by one of my friends in South India. This is a labyrinth, a maze. There is a Topikalu, the umbrella stone of Kerala. I presume uh, whosoever is studying in megaliths are acquainted with this. This is from the Senapati district of uh, Manipur, the standing stones, just see how closely they resemble the Orao megaliths. So it's stunningly beautiful. Now, I'll show you a few more megaliths of Jharkhand before concluding this uh, uh, talk. This particular site is gone. It's lost, completely destroyed. Here is another tall stone, very thick. And that over there is one of my students. And here I stand many years ago. This is a particular site. In front of it, there's a large field. And you can see the Sadbharwa pots. This uh, is a site famous uh, for its Sadbharwa rituals. And here is a beautiful megalithic site. And you can see the mound. You can see the burial mound. In front, you can see the raised mound that requires to be excavated. Not much astronomy in this. Here is another beautiful stone circle. And here is a raised mound as well that contains the burial. You see, excavation is indeed required to find. Does uh, what sort of burials are these? Because so far we have found only pot burials in Jharkhand. There is another. This is one of the stunning, my most favorite archaeoastronomical site completely destroyed. The site exists no more. If you wish to read about this site, you can get hold of my book, The Archaeoastronomy of a Few Megalithic Sites of Jharkhand. It's available on many uh, bookstores around the country and as well as in Amazon and Flipboard. This is amazing. And here is another standing man here. Is another, this is a stone circle, you can see, and there is a phallic stone in the between, in the middle, and there should be the berry. This particular uh, uh, megalithic site is an archaeoastronomical site, the Pankri Barwadi one. You see, here is another oblong which contains the burial. This kind of dolmens are scattered all over Jharkhand. We cannot associate, I mean, there are no evidence to associate such monuments with the present set of Mundari, Ho, Asur, Orao tribes because their Sasandiris are different. This is a different kind of a dolmen to which tribe can we ascribe such monuments is difficult to suggest. Here is another one. We do not know. This is an amazing structure. Mm, a, a very European in style. I do not know. We uh, we found a, a nothing, excepting a few uh, black pottery. Now, would that be associated with this particular dolmen, or would that also be a Sadbharwa, uh, a modern day Sadbharwa uh, 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 relic? We have very less idea. Now, I will show you some modern day uh, Biddiris. This is a modern day one. You see, currently uh, uh, erected. This is another one. The Mundas put in that particular white cloth on that particular uh, standing man here. This is a Munda burial influenced by the Orao Sasandiri. There is another one. This is a uh, a more modern day Sandiri. Okay, so <clears throat> these sites are being destroyed. This is another one. The, the modern day 
Ural ones. You can see them. This is the Ural. This is the Ural village. And the Urals erect the small Sasandiri. I, I, had, I had shown you the bigger ones, which are the ancient ones. The destruction of megaliths. They were. Just see, all these megaliths have been toppled as the villagers were seeking the buried treasure. These sites exist no more. They were the fallen men here. Children trying acrobatics on this particular menhir had this uh, ancient menhir toppled. There are many. I mean, well, I, I, it's very difficult uh, to uh, show all this uh, destroyed and obliterated and uh, uh, demolished megaliths in one particular one hour program. It's not possible. So, one thing. Uh, and of course, they, the, the villagers carry them away and then put them on top of their wells. They even uh, put them in the courtyard next to the wells and use it as their washing stones. How very sad. Now, <clears throat> megaliths are being destroyed every day. And these ancient and sacred stones are being towered away, towered away for mundane domestic uses. If such a process of destruction of megaliths continue, the Adivasis of Jharkhand very soon will be left with no archaeological relics of their past of which they can boast of unless they themselves wake up to protect their own heritage of megaliths. Our country in the process will lose significant artifacts of prehistory of which not many people are aware of. You see, so a state Allied with such megalithism other than Jharkhand is indeed difficult to find. You must understand, my friends, that megaliths are the truest source of India's past. Megaliths and tribalism should be respected and understood. Have you ever visited a megalithic site? If not, then please visit one. And once there, Remain silent. Remain silent to convey your respect to these old monuments and then and their unknown makers. Come, let's celebrate megaliths. Thank you. And you had been so patient, I would express my heartfelt gratitude to you all. Thank you, sir. After that extensive discussion on megaliths, um, we move on to our next segment. Um, with your due permission, we would like to take a few questions from our esteemed audience. There are quite a few dignitaries in our audience uh, as well. Uh, just and, a uh, moment. I'm very tired now because I have to take my next medicine. So therefore, please uh, get concise only two questions. I cannot take in more than two. Okay, please bear the two questions. Okay, sir. Oh. Two questions, please. Uh, uh, yes, uh, here is one from uh, Rajesh Purohit, sir. Uh, how do you distinguish between the different types of megalithic yeah, barriers good, of good Sathal question. or Aurai? Uh, 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 Mr. Piro, yes. I just had a talk on that. I just had a talk on that. Uh, it is very difficult right now, at the present age, to distinguish between a Mundari and a Orao. Because I told you a little earlier, the Mundas have also begun to erect megaliths similar to the Orao ones. So therefore, I mean, and in the local term, many in many places, these uh, Sasandiris, they have begun to call Kursis. It's a very difficult one. The Santals are known not to build uh, uh, megaliths. Now, this, I think I have shown, is not correct. They built canes, and such canes are typical only to Santals. I hope that clears. Let's have the next one, please. 
Shilpa Wadekar, ma'am. She has asked, are dolmens the symbol of creative energy? I can't hear you. Can you are be a little more? Are dolmens the symbol of creative energy? I don't know. I mean, this is a all energy business. Uh, I don't know all these things. Uh, this is a, not a part of my research. I mean, there are a set of people who are coming into this energy business. I am unsure of this. Can I have another last question? Yes. Uh, why are menhirs, menhirs associated with sacred groves? That's also a mystery. Uh, that is also a mystery. Why are they associated? Because I have shown there are two uh, mm, uh, mm, sectors. One, the megalithic hargaris are found to be positioned within sacred groves. Now, the sacred groves, these trees cannot be that old as the stones. So therefore, the stones ought to be older than the trees. But the impression we get that the trees are older. Okay. Now, these particular uh, uh, groves, why they have been planted, no one can say. And only we can just speculate. Okay. Uh, and about the sacred groves, if you wish to know more of the sacred groves, I think uh, I require another talk for that. I think that should be all. Uh, I cannot take any more. I'm very tired now. Thank and you so if, much. If there are any further questions, they can mail me if they wish. Okay, if they can so mail sure. me, that we is the better thing to do. We can do that. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation. My pleasure. Taking time from your busy schedule to speak to our viewers. Now, it would be absolutely unfair for us if we do not thank uh, Mrs. Manita Pandey, ma'am, Dr. Ananta Shutosh Dvivedi, sir, for putting their stupendous efforts in putting together this lecture series. We thank all our annual members of Heritage Society, our lovely audience who keep supporting us unconditionally through all our efforts. And we thank each and every of the Virasat Mitras of the Heritage Society. A big thank you to now, each one of you for your better efforts in putting these sessions together. Thank you once again, sir. Just thank you so much. Then, let me thank you uh, and, of course, Dr. Duvedi and Manita ji for having me here and presenting it to my beautiful uh, audience. Thank you to you all. Yes, sir. It was absolutely an honor and privilege for us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good night, sir. Have a good day. Good evening. And thank you and the very same to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.